I'm here at Ikhlouf Hospital in the Rehabilitation Center. I came here to meet Shir'il, an Israeli hero. She was at the Nova party on the 7th of October and she was shot by a Hamas terrorist. She has an unbelievable story. Come with me. Seventh of October. You were there. Yeah. What were you doing there? I was at the party. Walk me through. Six thirty a.m. Hamas starting to launch rockets towards Israel, towards the party as well. What do you do? At that moment, I was alone because at parties I usually just go around a lot, um, and there was a lot of stress coming up in the air. And I remember seeing a friend of mine that I didn't come to the party with. He was like, come with me. So we, we go on the ground, we cover our heads, and we're, we're waiting for everything to calm down. Then what happened? So we did that, and I, I called my dad, and he was on the phone with me. Um, and we're waiting, and my friends were convincing me. They were on the phone as well. It was like this for a little while until I was like, OK, they won't stop. They're all in the car. I have to go. So my friend was like, I'm coming to get you. I ran to her. We ran together. We found the car. So let me just explain how it is. You go out of the party and you have a road, 232. Two. And then you either take left, which is north, right to the south. And you've already took left, yeah. going towards north. What happened? Why didn't you escape? Because Hamas put a barrier. <laughs> Um, we drive a bit and then we go into the bomb shelter. There's a lot of people inside, a lot of chaos, um, people stressed out. I was trying to get people's morale. I was stressing out a bit, of course, but I, I saw people losing it. You know, people crying, saying they don't want to be here, saying they have to get out of here. There's terrorists in the area and I'm, I'm just like, you're okay, we're okay. There's missiles right now, it'll be fine. Roughly how many people were inside the, the bomb shelter? I think about 30. About 30. Yeah. Then we hear the gunshots outside, shouts in Arabic, and then they come in. They, they came into the bomb shelter? They came in. There's no doors, so they can just come in whenever they want. And I was on the ground with my legs bent. A lot of people were standing up, and they started shooting at everyone. And, you know, an instinct of a human being when they're being shot is to run. So basically what happened, there's nowhere to run. You, ch you go to the end of the bomb shelter. So they, everyone just fell on me. And basically dying on me, you know? And at that moment, I was very, very responsive. I, went, I got into survi survival mode. What's going through your mind? My parents. Are they on the line? No, my phone, it got dis the phone call got disconnected. So my dad didn't, really, didn't hear the gunshots. But after that happened, after a little while, when it was safe to look up for a second, I took my phone and I texted him. There's people, there's pe people got shot. We need an ambulance ASAP. Uh, get the police. We need them right now. And that's when my dad understood that the terrorists got to the bomb shelter. How many dead people were there out of the roughly 30 people? How, a bit more than half. I was very, I was in survival mode most of the time, but there were times when my mind would slip away from that and then I'd start thinking. And I remember I had this very vivid thought about me being in a gas chamber, like in the ho Holocaust. I felt as if I was in the Holocaust because every time they would throw grenades, you know, we'd, we'd choke on the grenade smoke. And, and it was hot and we were all, there's dead bodies around me. And I just remember feeling like I'm in a gas chamber. And there was this lady in front of me that she was screaming. Now at that point, most people died. So we were all quiet. And when we were quiet, we would be able to pretend to be dead. So then they wouldn't hear us and come back inside because we were all very scared. But then her face started blowing up as if sort of like a in infection in her body from the bullets. I don't even know. Um, maybe her, her system's collapsing inside. And I, we all were like, we all remember her screaming, look what's happening to me, look what's happening to me. And I didn't say this, but you know, people said, be quiet. For how long you stayed in that bomb shelter? 
Seven hours. Seven hours with more than 15 dead bodies? Yep. With a bullet? Yep. That what, hit your knee? It hit my knee and it broke both my knee and my calf. I was just wondering, were the terrorists, Hamas terrorists, did they try to make sure, like during the seven hours that you were in that bomb shelter, did they try to come and to make sure that everybody is dead once in a every while? Yeah, they came back all the time. Did you thought about the fact that you could have been, that you're going to die? Yeah, yeah. I was ready, I, I told myself I was ready for them to come and kill me. Until one of the girls said that her dad was going to come rescue us. The Israeli people, and there's a lot of people in the world as well, not only think, but knows that you are a hero and you should be proud of yourself. Being seven hours in, in, a, in, in, in a, such a, a unbelievable conditions like this, it's, it's not something for human beings. No. And still surviving and seeing you uh, from time to time even put a smile in your face. That's the biggest win over those terrorists. Yeah. Any message to the Israeli people? We're strong. We're very strong. And I'm Israel Chai. And I think this is exactly the time we can finish this video. I'm Israel Chai. And just like Sher El, she is strong, we are strong, and we will win.